Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, today, we're going to have a presentation about the power of three, uh, discovery, service management, and asset management all working together. My name is Rob Ferullo, and I'll take us through this presentation today. Let me go ahead and share up my desktop. Again, as I mentioned, my name is Rob Ferullo, and I've been in service and asset management uh, my whole career. Uh, I absolutely love this, uh, this industry and um, have worked for some of our competitors in the past. I started in IT, uh, spent some time in professional services, and uh, have been lucky enough to be certified by the International Association of IT Asset Managers back in 2008. So I've been doing this, talking about this for a while, and um, really passionate about it. Uh, so today, I just want to kind of talk about some of the challenges that we see in the industry. First, on the service management side, you know, we're struggling all the time to automate tasks. Um, things like new hire onboarding routines I really need to have workflow that automates these mundane tasks, such as automatically provisioning new accounts and, and providing uh, entitlements to those accounts in an automated way. Um, we're lacking transparency into other systems. You know, uh, at the service desk, a lot of times we struggle uh, to have visibility into the asset side of the world and what machines are being used by which users and, and why. Um, the environments are getting ever more complex. Integrations uh, with these different systems are challenging. And the resources to manage them all is, is becoming um, more and more difficult to find. On the asset management side of the house, you know, gaining visibility is one of the biggest challenges. Understanding what you have and where it is uh, is always a big challenge. Uh, driving the costs of, um, of your asset management program down are almost impossible when you're lacking the visibility of where things are. And in understanding the age of your assets and, and uh, knowing when to retire old technology because it becomes increasingly more expensive uh, to support older technology and then being able to pro properly predict the business impact uh, of the asset management state of affairs uh, and, and how that um, basically draws from, from the budget of the IT department uh, and, and impacts the organization. So these are some of the real challenges that we see on, on both the service and asset management side of the house. Now with Avanti, uh, we bring these together, service management, asset management, and discovery, so that the sum of the parts really become, the sum is greater than the parts, uh, where you're able to perform better asset inventory through discovery of all of your assets, whether they're end user based or in the data center, whether they're um, out on the internet and, and live in, in the environment, or whether you, they're physically attached to your own network. And by integrating service management and asset management with the discovery, you're able to provide better uh, procurement workflows, integrating the service desk workflow and request system with procurement. And you'll be able to provide better change management because you'll know what you're changing, what systems are gonna be affected, and you'll be able to do better cost optimization. You'll be able to provide uh, and, and pass audits with, with ease and be more proactive with your service delivery. So let's go ahead and jump into this and uh, take a look at the product live. I'm gonna start us off with our discovery solution. So this is what we refer to as the Neurons platform. And the Neurons platform was purpose-built from the ground up with really three goals in mind. Data uh, normalization, device deduplication, and device reconciliation. So uh, really at its core structure, that's what this platform does. Now it, it does a lot more when we talk about end user computer management, uh, we can do cloud-based patching, we can do software delivery, we've got self-healing um, bots that, that can manage the device uh, and provide better user experience, uh, a lot of security capabilities. Uh, but when we refer to um, the Neurons platform in relation to how it helps the service and ma uh, asset management world, we're really focused on its core technology of discovery, reconciliation, deduplication, and normalization. So let's start there. Uh, in discovery, the first thing that you want to know is that we're able to discover all the devices on your network. Um, so 
All you need to do is plug in uh, into neurons your IP ranges, and you can address them in a bunch of different formats. Here I've scanned my home network. And the first thing that happens as we start the scan is we check whether or not the IP address is alive. If it is, we next step is to detect the operating system. Once we know the operating system, we can perform a remote inventory with the correct protocols and using the correct technology uh, to get a remote inventory of the device. And if it's not a Windows or Mac or Linux type of device that, that we can retrieve inventory from in a normal state, then we'll attempt to uh, get an SNMP inventory um, as if it's a network device and try to get some information from it in that manner. So we'll get network gear and um, switches, hubs, routers, Linux, Mac, Windows, and we'll perform a complete remote inventory of the device. You have the option of automatically loading the agent on the device at the time or not, it's up to you. Um, but that's great when you're actively scanning your network, but what about the machines that come on uh, online in between those scans? Well, Avanti has a solution for those guys as well. If a machine turns on in between scans, the first thing every machine is going to do is ARP for a new IP address. Avanti is going to see that ARP request and basically tattletale. We'll go squeal to the discovery server that a new machine just came on. Here's the address that it ARPed from. Go interrogate it and see if it's already in the database. So let's pretend like we find a device in your environment and it's a laptop and maybe it's a Lenovo laptop. We get all of its hardware, software inventory, but there's some information that Avanti can never retrieve through a, through a discovery scan. Some information is kept in other sources of truth, other repositories outside of the Avanti sphere. So one of the things that you might do is the next step in getting this asset prepared to go into the CMDB, into the asset repository, is set up your connectors. Your connectors are going to augment that asset with secondary or tertiary information about it that you might want in the asset repository, such, such as its warranty information. Right? Did you purchase the three-year warranty or the five-year warranty? Do you have next day service or the standard three-day service? That information is really critical when you're a help desk agent working with a cracked laptop screen. Right, So setting up your Lenovo or your... Um, your, your Dell warranty information to come in is, is really important. You can see a bunch of other connectors that you might use in your environment today that could be very helpful. A jam for your Mac devices. Um, you've got your endpoint management. So if you're using Avanti MDM, all of the cell phone information can come in. If you're using something like Microsoft Intune, uh, we've got a connector for that. So you can pull in all of those devices. Sometimes devices never even hit your network, you know, and, and you still want that asset information in your CMDB, in your asset repository. So things like the Intune connector can pull in that mobile device information for machines that may never actually attach to your network, but you'll still have, be, or have them in the repository and be able to reference them. Things like the guest to host relationship with VMware, Rapid7 will bring in security information or tenable vulnerability information, purchasing information from Insight and CDW. All of this is designed to reconcile, deduplicate devices into a single device, normalize that data and get it prepared for the asset repository. The reason why this is a separate platform than the ITSM, ITAM uh, platform is because it's purpose built for this sole purpose, right? It's device deduplication, reconciliation, and normalization. So what happens once we discover the device? It'll come into this bucket as it gets prepared to be sent over into the asset repository. I'm just gonna give you a little view of what the device might look like. This one here is gonna have an agent loaded on it. So it's got a little bit additional functionality. Uh, we can see the current logged on user. We can see the asset tag that had been assigned to the device. Uh, how long the device has been into service, uh, what its digital experience score is. This is our artificial intelligence that's describing how the user's experience with the device is going. This has got a score of 66, which is pretty good, and it's got a couple of indicators that tell me that there are some things that I might want to look at. Um, the OS is a little out of date. It has an open ticket against this asset. Um, there was a device end of life that has already passed. So we've got some things that are going on, some warnings and indicators that are telling us that this user is having some, some issues with the device. Uh, it's performance, current live performance of CPU and memory. 
uh, network information. And as you jump into the details of the device, you can really see we gain all the granular bits and bytes from a hardware and software inventory, but we also compile information from other sources of truth. This device has been discovered in Active Directory and we've retrieved some attributes from Active Directory about the device. The device was also discovered in Avanti's Endpoint Manager. So there's multiple places where the device has been discovered. It's been reconciled into a single object, a single asset record, and then it's sent over to the asset repository for ongoing lifecycle management, assignment to user, uh, attachment to change management workflows, et cetera. So let's take a look at that. As we come into the asset repository, you can see here that um, the ITAM solution has uh, at the top level, all of the major uh, components or areas that you would um, expect from an asset management solution. At the highest tier, we have a product catalog. Product catalog is similar to the services that you deliver within service management, but with an asset management, these are um, sort of the, the highest tier items that we're gonna track. If we take a look at uh, some of the items in here, let's take a look at our MacBook Pro. You can see, you know, we've got images, we've got um, an asset count. I should have grabbed one that had a little better data behind it. Asset count, we can track its carbon footprint information, where it's in stock, um, any purchases, active purchases that are happening, et cetera. So the product catalog really allows us to identify the high level items that we're tracking. And as items come in from the discovery solution, they'll, they'll feed into your asset repository. If we take a look at the device that we just uh, looked at from the Neurons platform, here it is once it's arrived into uh, the ITAM solution. And here we have assignment. Now, assignment is separate from discovery uh, information. We will discover who's logged into the machine, but that's different from who should be assigned to the machine. Sometimes they equal each other and sometimes they don't. A good asset management program is gonna bring these exceptions to your, uh, to your, to, to your face in, in an actionable way in an exceptions dashboard. So here you can see the asset is assigned to Johnny Avanti, but on the discovery tab, we've dis discovered that actually, and if you saw earlier, uh, setup.env was the logged on user. So this is actually uh, machine is, is, is um, on our user exception list because the user is not the same that's the user logged in. If I come back to our dashboards here, we've got a bunch of ways to visualize the data that's in the asset repository, but one of the most actionable ways is on our exceptions dashboard. So our exceptions dashboard is going to tell us, hey, there are there's a device out there, this virtual desktop, and uh, it has a user exception. It's supposed to have one user assigned to it, but it has a different user logged into it. Likewise, over here, we've got a machine that has a location exception. If we drill into this machine, you'll see that we expect this machine to be in the London storage location. It should be in stock, according to the asset management program according to ITAM. But Discovery's come along and found that actually Susie is currently logged into it and she's in Frankfurt. And we know that she's in Frankfurt because the IP address has been mapped back to the Frankfurt location. So this both has a user exception and a location exception. And this gives us actionable information that we can now contact Susie and figure out what happened, right? Did she grab the laptop when nobody was looking or did somebody assign it to her and forget to update the record, right? Either way, we're gonna have to contact Susie and understand uh, what's going on. Now, another big area that these two solutions come together very, very tightly when you add asset management and discovery with the service management side of the house is at the service desk. So over here, I'm logged in as a technician. I'm, an ass, I'm a standard IT administrator. And if I log a new ticket, here I'm just gonna log a new incident. And I'm gonna use one of my templates here for a SQL error. Pretend that my customer's calling in with a SQL error. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is put in the customer's name, Johnny Avanti. As Soon as I plug in Johnny Avanti, his information uh, comes into the ticket. We'll classify this as a data uh, issue. 
and then it's a sorry connectivity issue. Now, one of the great things about linking service management and asset management together is now we can uh, automatically discover the user's assets and quickly and easily add them to the ticket. There are over a thousand CIs in the CMDB, but this link button allows me to quickly filter the CMDB on just the assets that are assigned to Johnny Avanti. So if we take a look at Johnny Avanti's record, you can see that he has two CIs assigned to him. <coughs> Pardon me, the virtual desktop and the laptop. This happens through the discovery mechanism and automatically linking users to computers as they arrive in the ITAM and ITSM solution. So we can automatically link users to computers and then provide those um, links quickly and easily to service desk personnel for attaching uh, devices to incidents. Now our standard discovery that we talked about and, and showed all the connectors for is great for discovering devices, particularly end user computers. But when we talk about discovering the data center, we really need to kind of ratchet up the discovery solution a little bit. If you want to be able to discover entire service maps, such as this. So what is the data service? The data service is something that we provide as a service to our customers. It's a variety of database services, and there's a series of data, uh, database clusters that support this service, right? This data service is mapped out in the platform. And that can be done in a manual way, but it can also be done by using our neurons for service mapping. So neurons for service mapping is, is focused just on data center and private cloud. And it will allow you to not only discover all of the assets in the data center, but it'll also allow you to discover how they're connected, what devices communicate with which devices and what those um, relationships are. So this would allow you to then say, if we're going to do a, a change management workflow on this SQL server, well, we can simulate the outage and see exactly what's going to be affected. And, and this is a great view from the top down. You know, if you think about um, looking through one end of the telescope or the looking glass, right here, we're, we're at the data service. We're focused here and we're looking top down. But if we want to refocus or re-centralize on the server that, that I mentioned, this SQL server, and now repeat that simulated outage. Now we can show that actually this is a shared server. This SQL server is a member of multiple services. And if we were to run into the data center and take it down because it needs a new network card or an upgrade of some sort, right? We're gonna actually need to coordinate with multiple teams not just the data service team. The ERP team, the finance team, the desktop team, and HR are all gonna be affected. So one of the great things that we can do in our change management workflows is automatically notify all the CI owners within this map of the change. Include them in the approval workflows. Call them to CAB when necessary. Make sure that they're, in, they're notified of the potential outage uh, or, or impact to their service as well. So the discovery information becomes really critical as we um, as we start to leverage that in our in our incident workflows, in our change management workflows, release management, problem management, and and of course as new projects come into the environment, right? They can be built out, staged, and then delivered through service and asset management. So uh, we really feel at Avanti that this all ties extremely tightly together. All right. So how do we do it better, right? We feel that we gain better visibility. We provide our customers a comprehensive understanding of, of the assets that they have, both from an end user perspective and in the data center. We're able to populate the asset repository CMDB automatically linking devices to users and, and populating service maps that are going to work seamlessly in your change management workflows. The digital experience uh, is very unique to Avanti. 
Uh, this really helps to uh, identify problem devices in the environment, um, allowing technicians to get ahead of potential issues with customers um, and, and really be proactive in uh, replacing problematic devices, right? Our low code, no code environment is gonna allow you to very quickly and easily get new items into the service catalog you're gonna be able to uh, very rapidly build and deliver items into the service catalog uh, without any coding. I'm actually gonna jump out of PowerPoint and, and we're gonna go back into the platform and show you a little bit of the no code platform because it's really critical to understand how you can automate some of those workflows. Right? And we really provide a very comprehensive solution, um, when, especially when you integrate the discovery mechanisms and ITAM, with service management, Th those three components working together, the sum is greater than the parts. So let's jump into the low code for a moment here. One of the um, areas, oh, wrong browser. One of the areas that we're very unique is, is in this ability to get new items into the service catalog. Uh, I'm gonna, I talked a little bit earlier about our new employee workflows. And, and how automating things uh, be, are, are, are really critical. So here's a workflow that um, automates the onboarding of, an, of a new user account by creating the account in Azure and provisioning them in the, into the correct group. Now, all of the items in our service catalog are essentially a four-step process to put it out there for the customer to request. Step one is simply identifying the name and, um, and where it's gonna exist in the catalog. Step two is building out the form. Now, in other products, there's a lot of coding. You have to first create fields, then you have to go to another place where you put them together on a form, then you go to another place where you call them in a workflow. Here, we just drag and drop new fields into uh, an existing um, form or create a new form, give it a name, and you're ready to go. Right, you don't need to be a SQL expert to uh, go create new fields in a database. You don't need to know JavaScript or anything else. Uh, you can drag and drop and create new attributes in the database. You can make them required, control its visibility, um, perform expressions on the field, et cetera. But you know, it's very simple, just drag and drop and you're ready to go. The next stage here is our visual workflow designer. And this is critical for understanding how uh, requests or incidents or changes, whatever type of record you're working on, moves throughout its life cycle. So every record uh, has a start and an end, right? You wanna go from green to red um, and the steps in between are always gonna change based off of the workflow required. Now, in this case, the first thing that we do is we route out for an approval. So we're routing out to uh, Alan Taylor, who is going to provide the approval. Um, and once it's approved, we will go forward with an Azure Active Directory account creation. So here we're calling a, a webhook to uh, link out to our Azure tenant and create the account with the variables mentioned in the form, first name, last name, et cetera. The team value is used in the next step when we assign the user to the group. So we'll then make a second webhook call. Uh, we'll wait 15 seconds for this account to be fully created and kind of give a pause, um, take a breath, and then add the user to the correct group. And then we'll wait for the other paths to rejoin. Some of these tasks are more manual. Uh, we route out to finance to get an Amex card if applicable, get a mobile device configured if applicable, go pull an asset from stock, uh, order business cards. Once all the jobs are completed, then we'll go through our standard, repeatable, predictable closure workflow. This is like a Lego brick. This is another workflow that we don't have to recreate every single time we want to close a ticket. What's the process in closing the ticket? Mark the record to fulfilled, email the customer, email the owner, uh, You know, include all the details that was um, um, done in the resolution or fulfillment notes, and then close out of the workflow. These workflows, just like the form, are all done in a drag and drop uh, web environment. So if you wanted to add another task after the asset was requested, we can just grab another task here, drag and drop, and, and complete our workflow this way. 
All of these dialog boxes are simple, um, easy to fill out dialog boxes where you're going to pick the, the, the team that's going to run the, the task. You can pull in variables from the form here just by dragging and dropping in uh, variables. So our no code environment is really critical because this is what allows your customer to very quickly and easily make requests from the Avanti self-service portal. And remember, our licensing allows for unlimited self-service users. So anybody can be a customer and um, leverage the Avanti solution. All right. And then, you know, ultimately, by being low code, no code, you'll be more agile. You'll be able to get new items into the service catalog quickly. You'll be able to take on new projects as new um new, new uh, solutions come into the environment, you'll be able to get those items into the catalog very quickly. You'll increase productivity, you'll be able to leverage our artificial intelligence for uh, things like automatic ticket classification and, and gen uh, AI for generating knowledge articles and ticket summarization. You'll improve service quality, uh, you'll be able to more accurately deliver services and um, you'll be able to perform less manual work, automating manual tasks, and deliver a better employee experience. So thank you very much. I hope uh, this presentation has helped you understand how Avanti can bring together these three different solutions of discovery, ITAM, and ITSM, uh, and, and make your service desk and, and IT operations um, more efficient and more productive.